Here is a real project. The geometry is ready and the stage has come to install the cameras and set up the light. But what if there are many cameras in the scene and you need to install a batch render which allows you to install it and everything happens automatically denoise is applied. It is saved to the required location. You do not need to monitor it. That is, how do we solve the problem of many angles? In this video, we will set up three cameras, each with an individual light and additionally set up light mix in a rather unusual way. Let's get started. Let's put the camera in the TV zone, put the camera in the kitchen zone and put the camera in the windows zone. There will most likely be more cameras in this project. After I set up the cameras, I'll edit something. For example, the light that I will install now, I will edit later when I have the materials. Let's make a small sketch. The main goal is optimization. As usual, we set up cameras and lights. Personally, for each camera, I hide the light and everything necessary for a certain angle in a layer. I have to switch between cameras and between layers every time manually. That is a lot of monotonous actions. Today, I will tell you how to optimize all these actions. Go to Camera Corona Cam. Select Top Mode using Hotkey T. Let's create a camera that will be here. By the way, the video is designed for those already working as visualizers. That is, if you are a beginner, then you will be interested in the future when you do real projects that there is such a method, you will keep it in mind. If it's unclear yet, watch, it will become clearer. We install the camera and there are already two views here. Now the viewport is divided into two. I divided it into two. To do this, click plus here, configure viewports layout. Here we divide by two. We can change it to any convenient type. Select the camera view and perspective apply and OK in this case. In this part of the screen, I press the middle mouse button and drag the camera higher, pressing shift plus F. This displays the real frame formats. Now let's do some magic. I will use a modifier called EPC environment per camera. EPC is downloaded and installed separately. Later, I'll tell you how to do this. After installation, you will have access to these buttons. EPC switcher the hub with different cameras. So far, there is only one. EPC light mix will look at this button later. We installed the camera and applied the EPC modifier. All the necessary settings are already here. I'll briefly tell you what's here. In image size and camera, you can control the camera settings by changing the format. And there is a batch render function. Let's put some angle. For example, I'll install the standard, often used 16 by 9. You can press lock. I'll remove lock and let's look at the formats the most frequently used and widespread. You can do a swap, turn the sides over. Click lock and for example, you need to make a preview for the customer. You can leave the proportions the same but double the size of the image or vice versa. 
if you have many cameras, you can make the larger side. Currently 1000 applies to all cameras. Select the format you need, press this button and all cameras will have the larger side and the smaller side will be calculated within the proportion. The larger and smaller sides will be applied equally to all cameras by clicking this button. If you are unsatisfied with the default parameters, you can make your own preset. Let's take a look at camera control. Here are 90% of the settings needed during the work process. Sometimes you must return to the camera. For example, if you want to set depth of field, you can concentrate on one object here. The preliminary settings are done and nothing more is needed. Automatic vertical tilt if you mess up the vertical, this function will fix it. If you place the camera unevenly, you can use camera align to level it. If the pivot is set incorrectly, clicking center camera pivot can easily correct everything. Let's continue setting up our camera. I'll switch the field of view to focal length. I'll set it to 25 millimeters. I'll move it here a little. I'll make this sofa translucent. Press Alt plus X. I wouldn't say I like the frame because the sofa and the chair don't completely fit. There's a lot of ceiling and floor. Therefore, I will change the format and select 16 by 9. I will set the following values. I'll move it a little. The rare moment we need to return from EPC to a separate camera is to add to the exceptions. What am I trying to do in this frame? I want to show the TV zone, this sofa and these chairs. But the sofa that stands right in front of me is clearly in the way. A little trick that can help is to select enable include exclude list here and add an object that does not need to be shown to exclude. Let's go back to ETC. Let's leave this frame for now since I want to adjust all the frames. They are all almost similar and then we will set the light for them and move objects.
Let's turn on EPC camera switcher and I'll show you how to copy a camera. I'll call it TV to understand where the camera is. You can copy the object using shift, but I want to make it easier. But it's more convenient for me personally to do it through this hub. I press shift, click on this camera and immediately have a copy. I'll call it the kitchen. I take this camera and move it. The camera and its settings are copied. I'll leave it this way since the sofa is still in the way. I can change the format here as well as the values. I can put a different focus length. It would be possible to put a camera to capture the dining area. But I won't do that, leaving the camera like that. Let's return to the TV camera, dimensions 1D 800 by 900 focal length 25 millimeters. In the kitchen 1D 800 by 1000, the focal length is 28 millimeters. The camera automatically switches to the window where you selected the main one. Here you have lock selected. If you had cameras before installing the script, you could add them by clicking Add EPC to all cameras. You can also switch between cameras with arrows. You can add batch render not only from this window, but also from this one. Also, you can select a target from here when you need to use the target at the camera, but don't want to go after it. Let's install another camera, a third one, and start setting it up. I'll check that everything is smooth. Let's use clipping. Using near clip, I crop what I have in front. I'll set a large value in far clip, for example, 50,000. We have two planes, one cuts closer to us, the other further away. You can set a larger distance here to prevent anything from being cut off at the back. Let's add this sofa as an exception since it will most likely get in the way. I'll go here and select a focal length of 26 millimeters. Let's move on to setting up the light, but before that, a small addition. For example, let's set up a camera. What we can do, using camera rotation, we rotate by 45 degrees in one motion. And can also do reverse in one click. You could copy this camera by holding shift or flipping it using reverse. It's a very convenient feature. I'll go to camera switcher and rename it to window. Let's start setting up the light.
Let's go back to TV. Let's move on to the tabs below. Corona Sun and Corona Sky and H-Dry Map. Let's start with Global Illumination. For all H-Dry maps to appear here, you need to go to the Material Editor, click here, create a new view, and be sure to write with capital letters H-Dry. In this view, we can now create maps, then Corona, then Corona Sky. It automatically appeared here and can be used with Corona Color Correct or Color Correct. I'll set this saturation value. I will rename the map to Sky Corona. Here I click Refresh List and this card appears here. Everything is very convenient. Let's render and see how we do. Now it is no edge dry. I select Sky Corona and the image appears. The sky from Corona is used. Let's look at the following Creator Sun specifically for this camera. Moving here, light Corona Sun. Let's put the sun here. Let's call it Sun TV because that's the angle we need. Nothing has changed. Let's change to these values. And the target will stand out with it. And if you select it like this, the lighting changes. You can select the sun here. Let's change the intensity to 0, 5 and size 4. Kelvin temp 6000. Let's change the intensity value to 0, 2. choosing the location of the sun. The video's main idea is to show how to optimize your work. It would help if you sped up routine operations to have more time for the creative part of your work. I'll leave it like this. Let's move on to the next angles, and we will return to this later since it still needs to be finalized. I'm saving. 
Let's go to the kitchen. I launch an interactive render. If you select Sun TV, a sun will be designed for a different angle. But we create another sun and now we can choose any values. Rename it Sun Kitchen. I go to the camera. This sun has appeared here. Move the sun and change the values. What other advantages of the script? For example, if you don't know which sun to choose, copy using Shift, Sun, Kitchen, so one. Go into the camera and select either this sun or that. We realized this sun was unnecessary, so we isolated it and removed it. Don't forget to switch to those that are left. Another feature that we are unlikely to use in this project, but for information, let's take a look. I'll go to the materials editor, where there is a library with HDRI maps and open this HDRI. It is important not to drag and drop this H try, but to do it using Corona Bitmap. Maps Corona Corona Bitmap. I'll select this H try. Load it into the material editor and call it H try. Click on Refresh List. As you can see, HDRI is loaded. We connect just in case to this HDRI Corona Color Correct. Click on Refresh List. As you can see, HDRI is loaded. I'll remove the sun from here since the angle will be highlighted using the HDRI map that we loaded. Remove the blue color. We change the parameters and select the required type. In the script settings, we can rotate our H dry. There is no need to move to the material editor. I'll show you another exciting function in this script. I click Corona Sun. We call it Sun H Dry. Let's go to EPC Switcher.
I select Sun H Tri here and select H Tri CCC. Here is our H Tri map and many pixels illuminate our scene. There is a lot of sky and the sun is behind the clouds. The script allows you to link the sun and H dry. To do this, you need to click link in link Corona sky and H dry. We can change the environment value in the rotate section and the position changes. Interesting diffuse light, we can leave it like that. We can change the distance value to make the shadows look different. We can move the sun here to find the optimal view. With the right mouse button clicked, we reset the values. I'll show you some more handy functionality. With a script, you can add fake lights. Here is a camera that is aimed at the kitchen and we need to exclude the influence of fakes from another camera. You can add these lights to the exception. Let's create Corona light. Let's change the shape to rectangle. I'll put fake here. You can choose wireframe so there is no big white spot on half the screen. I uncheck all the boxes so that nothing gets in the way. The most important thing is to remove the occlude of other lights so that this rectangle does not interfere with light penetration. Let's change the values. What else do I want to show? For example, you need to highlight these places near the chairs. Create a corona light next to the chairs. In non-physical properties, exclude include, select include, OK and add chairs here. This light will illuminate only these chairs.
let's change the values. Let's move on. Let's move on to the next camera. I don't want the chairs to be illuminated on this side. The chairs in this case look unnatural. We need this fake light because it illuminates the ceiling and adds volume. This fake is not required. In lights click on the plus. But before that let me explain there are two modes. The first mode is off. All the lights you added to the list will not be turned on. Everyone will be included except them. Let's change the color and see that another fake is working. The one we excluded is omitted. Or you can enable only one light source. I'll add a sphere here to show how this works further. We see that there is a yellow light. I'll delete this light source. I added to the list that light is unnecessary. But if I go to the TV camera angle, we see that this light is here. Remember where they are to avoid going through. You can create any corona light. Turn on the on mode. And only this source behind the scene will be highlighted. We can hide it in layers. I'll move it into the scene. You can see that it's glowing. I'll return everything the way it was before. and adding light sources to exceptions. I will show you the following function, allowing you not to think about where the furniture is in the frame. In our case, there are three frames. Here, we are happy with how the table stands, but not with how the chair stands. And here, for example, the chair is good, but we don't like the table. How can I fix this? Let's go to time configuration. I changed the value from 100 to 10. Let's take TV.
Let's go to EPC time slider. Time codes from the timeline will be selected for each camera. We will animate objects for each frame. In frame 0, everything is like this. We don't change anything. In the first frame, it's different. In this way, we explain to the script that the objects of each frame are assigned to a certain angle. We place objects on this frame. Let's go to window. We see that the TV has one arrangement of objects. And when moving to window, the script automatically sets the required time code. All that remains is rearranging the furniture. We select the objects we need, click Auto, the script records where we move the object. Continue moving objects. And turn off Auto. I go to the TV and see that the objects are placed differently. Let's choose some light for this angle. Select Sky Corona in the environment for this camera and at the same time we will render. Let's add the sun. Let it shine from here. Let's call it sun window. Select from the list. Let's change the values. Let's save. Let's check each angle.
before we move on, let's create corona lights that we will use during the light mix setup. We could use fake lights, but for more variety, let's look at this option. I'm creating Corona Light Auto Grid including wireframe. I'm putting it out like this. Let's leave it in instance for now, but with a script, it's better to use copy. Let's change the size and location. I will rename everything. Tools, rename objects, kitchen line light, and change the values in numbered. Let's configure the following areas. Let's go to the kitchen. I'll leave it white since we'll change it later in light mix. Most often, it is more convenient to leave everything in white and then change everything to light mix. There are still a few functions left that I would like to show, but I will show you about them at the end. In the meantime, let's continue to deal with light mix. Let's make additional settings. Let's go to render setup, render elements. We won't do it through scene, we'll do everything manually. Select C Shading Light Mix and Render Elements to enable Light Mix. And rename it to Light Mix. Let's select Light Select.
the first light select will be responsible for global illumination. Select this checkbox. This will be responsible for the sky. Let's choose Light Select, which we'll call Rest, which when you select this item and this checkbox, will enable the noise on this channel as well since this channel is skipped during automatic creation. Add the rest of the Light Select for certain light sources. We will create the first one manually, and then you will see how this can be done without going into Render Setup. All the items we added to render setup are automatically added to the EPC light mix editor. I select lights here and remove all instances. All light sources are selected and I click the light mix in which I want to place all these light sources. I came here and saw that they appeared on the list. Now to create a new light mix where you will place the lamps for example. From this zone, press shift. Select any of these created ones and a new channel will be made. Let's call it living line. Add everything to the living line. By pressing Ctrl and selecting an item, I can rename it. I am adding a third zone. I hold down Shift and create a dinner line with a new name. I am adding light sources. Let's add one more sun item. Let's go to EPC switcher and place the sun in the channel we need, which in this case is the sun. Or you can do it manually like this. Let's create another channel for fakes. We select these fakes. Let's make a render and see what happens. We change the values and evaluate the result. Another magical feature. If you want to approach the creation of visualizations artistically, then creating the same type of angles is not the best idea. The standard batch render is unsuitable for these purposes. Let's change the value here to 800 since we don't need quality now. We need to get the result quickly. I'll change the noise level limit to 6. Here I'll change it to 40 seconds.
Here you can clear batch list and open batch render. You can place this particular camera or all cameras. We can choose the path where to save or clear. Select PNG and click save. You need to apply a more significant side to all. Open batch render, all EPC, path selected and click render. All is ready. We look at the result, the light is adjusted individually and the furniture is located separately. I confirm with the customer that the technical grade material stage is without light. It would be incomprehensible to him if you showed such an angle with a sofa. There is another way, you can show a preview from the viewport. Specify the path and save full viewport or geometry only. Let's look at screenshots from the viewport. That is, there is such an opportunity to show the work process. And how it was before I previously used the script. I don't remember the name, but it also allows you to create individual sizes for each camera, but it worked crookedly. It was necessary to press hotkey C, click on the desired camera, go to layers, create a layer and turn off the first and second layers. Need to switch to a second camera. It was necessary to select the time code and switch the camera manually. But the team who created the script in the video solved this problem perfectly. Autodesk needs to learn from them. As you understand, this script is called EPC or Environment Per Camera. Everything is described in detail on this site. The link is in the description and on the right block of this video. This is a must-have if you are already working or learning advanced visualization techniques. Read the information on the page and you can immediately purchase this fantastic script. The author constantly updates functionality and listens to users. Excellent documentation describes everything in detail. In the comments, share your opinion on how you like this solution and what you would add to the functionality. Bye everyone.